if you're driving on Highway 80 from the Bay Area, heading towards Sacramento or heading up toward Tahoe, you're gonna cross the Yolo Causeway. A long bridge, about three miles long, that goes over the top of a flood control structure, which is called the bypass, that takes the Sacramento River water when it gets to a certain level so that it doesn't flood the city of Sacramento, West Sacramento, and the surrounding communities. Under the Yola Causeway, there's about 250,000 Mexican free-tailed bats. The largest colony of bats in the Central Valley and probably uh, one of the largest in the state of California. The Mexican free-tailed bat is a, a bat that migrates, and it can migrate long distances. Um, they spend the summer with us, and right around the 1st of July, uh, each of the female will give birth to one pup. These bats are built for speed. They have narrow wings. These guys can go about 50 miles an hour, which is incredibly fast for a very small mammal. On their ears, they have little bumps and they can move their ears to change directions in how they're flying. The tail is extended beyond the skin membrane, which is where they get the free of free-tailed. So they can kind of tuck that skin membrane up, which reduces drag. So we're in the Yolo Bypass, and we're going to be traveling up to watch the large colony of bats fly from underneath the causeway. The bats are going to be flying underneath the freeway bridge and they're going to come right by this tree uh, and then eventually they're going to work their way up into the sky in a long ribbon and break off into their groups to go hunting. In our area here, we actually don't have caves, which is, would be the normal habitat for this particular species, but they have adapted to live in the structures that the humans have ended up providing. They live in the expansion joints, these crevices that are about one inch wide and about 12 inches deep. The maternal colonies really need that warmth for their pups to stay at the, the right temperature. And then of course, being made out of cement, it gives it that feeling of rock. I just looked at the time, it's about 8.15. We should start looking under the bridge to see movement. They actually gather in the same way that they would in a cave. So they travel along following the freeway to an exit point. They'll kind of boil there. And then when they hit their critical mass, they'll exit at that one location. Oh, oh, there we go. I have a machine called a bat detector. It picks up their high frequency sounds and it converts it to a lower frequency so that we're able to hear it. Here's another nice grouping. Usually we have three. Mexican free-tailed bats, like all of the bats that live here in California, eat insects. They're eating a lot of the moths that'll eat our corn, or whose larval stages will eat our tomatoes. It's very, very important, this pest control. So now, towards the end of June, we have a lot of hungry females uh, that are getting very close to giving birth. Their pup is gonna be quite large. I think of it as a mother giving birth to a kindergartner. I try to keep track of when the, the mothers have actually given birth. And what I do is I will go to the areas where the guano falls, which is right underneath, and literally there will be little placentas and umbilical cords. I have four separate placentas with the umbilical cord still attached. The umbilical cord would be the transport 
for the nutrients in the placenta to travel into the baby's body. And once the baby has been born, the baby won't need that anymore. It will begin to nurse. I have a permit with the Department of Fish and Game uh, and a permit with the USDA uh, to have bats in care and also to um, have bats to use for education programs. Little tiny wing. So this is a, a Mexican free tail bat pup. Um, he is about four days old. This bat pup came from a bat roost in the city of Davis. It had fallen out of the, the crevice in a bridge that goes over a sidewalk. I will raise it and uh, it will be released back into the roost once it can fly. Once they've had their pups, once they've given birth, they come out in uh, thicker groups. There they go. They have to eat a tremendous amount of insects because of the quantity of milk that their body's producing. They're going to eat about the equivalent of their weight in insects each night. That's a lot of insects. I like that they are so different than their reputation. That they're actually very calm animals for the most part. That they're hunting insects and not interested in us.